wanted to play that song not only because it inspired this message and got me on this kind of little hope journey, but also because it absolutely jacks me up. It kind of gets me excited. Um, a couple things. I do have to um, obviously thank Pastor for um, allowing me to be up here, and I have to thank my wonderful, beautiful fiance for uh, such a busy week of baseball, church, um, wedding planning, and uh, I want to thank um, the Smiths for bringing the food. Um, if you guys don't know, this is the graduation service. Um, I usually preach on the graduation service, and we have some tables set up set up in the back um, with uh, some pictures of the graduates. Um, and if you guys would like to go back there afterwards, we'll have just some cake. Um, actually, not just cake. It's a little different this year. I forgot. So that's why I wanted to thank the Smiths, because they brought some barbecue and chips. Um, we can get full before we go play golf, and um, we can just go back there, hang out. Um, it's a celebration. It's graduation. Celebration. Super emotional time. It's an exciting time. And um, we're super stoked for all the graduates. Go ahead and... We'll do this later, but go ahead now and stand if you're graduating from middle school or high school. Just stand. I'm not going to do anything awkward here. Yeah. You guys are good. And if you don't know their names, you can, like, find someone they're not sitting near and go ask them and so they don't ever find out. Um, before I even get on this message of hope, graduates... Um, Brad said some things, Pastor said some things, just got me thinking. This is the time in your life where just life itself gets thrown at you. Um, everybody's just throwing these, these thoughts, these ideas, these, you know, what are you going to do? And again, before we even dig into this, I have to tell you that from personal experience, if you don't keep God first, it'll be the most miserable, uncomfortable life that you've ever lived, even if you're going into a field or, or, or workforce or whatever direction that you enjoy, if you don't keep Christ at the center, um, it will not pan out, and you'll be miserable. I hope that's really encouraging to you today. And I do want to thank my brother, because he texted me this morning and said, don't forget a bottle of water. All right, hope. You keep hope alive is what the message is titled here. And my scripture is coming out of Romans 12.12. 12. I don't have any slides. Um, I will get better at that. But Romans 12.12. 12. So when I was a child, I saw these pastors do this, and I really enjoyed it. Um, and I don't have a lot of scripture. So I will ask, as we read the scripture, we all stand together, and I'll read the scripture. Can we do that? I, I'm pastor's not preaching, so I can kind of do what I want. And I remember the, I don't even remember who was up here, but he was just explaining just how powerful the word of God is and how much respect we should give it. And so we stand when we read it. And I've always wanted to try this, so I'm going to. Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in our confident hope, be patient in trouble, and keep on praying. I'm going to pray. Lord, I thank you so much for this day. I thank you for everyone here. I thank you for these graduates, Lord, that their, their um, next phase of life is coming, Lord. Um, we just want to celebrate that and, and just thank, thank you for guiding their lives, Lord. Um, and I, as I stand here, I prepared, I prayed, Lord, I uh, officially and for all these people give you this service. This is your service and not my service. Amen. You guys can be seated, sorry. But graduates, just like I was telling you, if you don't keep Christ at the center, I mean, there's no possible way I could get up here in front of people, prepare a message, and um, give it without uh, Christ being at the center of my life. Because if you think I'm a little nervous now, you should see me if I don't have Jesus in me. <laughs> All right, so first, defining hope. We have to define hope. Um, just dictionary online, just like we think, hope is an expectation or a desire for a certain thing to happen. I heard a lot at the end of school, I hope I pass this class, or I hope I pass this test. I'm making a lot of noise here. I'm trying to get it off me, I apologize. 
uh, I have a couple missionary friends um, from Taiwan. And I, you know, as I was studying and stuff, I was like, I wonder what these guys say. What, what is hope to them? So my, my friends, um, Tyler and Christy Peterson, they said, hope is believing the best is yet to come and expectation that there is something greater. That's really encouraging. But in our, I don't say day and age or in, in modern society, we use hope a lot as, well, just, just uh, I hope I pass this test. Or I know, you know, during baseball season, big sports guy, just coach baseball, so I'm going to throw a lot of baseball stuff at you. Um, I hope it doesn't rain today. There's a lot of uncertainty in our hope in modern society. It's such a lack of confidence. And uh, another pastor friend of mine um, out west, he said, hope is the beacon of light surrounded by darkness. And I thought that's super, super cool illustration is think of a dark room and just a, a, a lighter or a light, a candle in the distance. And that is hope. 1 Corinthians 15, 19 says, And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in this world. So this tells us first, our hope should be in Christ, but our hope should not stay in this life. So uh, if you guys see, I'm going to be kind of bouncing back and forth here. But um, our hope does not stay in this this life. That's what hope is. Hope is believing that the best is yet to come because my goodness does life stink sometimes and I hope this is not all that that, that is um, waiting for us right I mean our, there's there is eternity um, one way or another up or down and I mean that's our hope right our hope is to be with the father one day uh, enduring word common common commentary said if there is no principle of resurrection, then the whole Christian life is a pitiful joke. If we don't have something beyond this life to look forward to, why hassle with the problems of being a Christian? Being a Christian is not easy. I, I talk about in the youth group all the time. Um, I'm going to use a lot of sports analogies here. Um, just like most sports, the sport is simple, right? Being a Christian is simple. You, you, you give your life to Christ, and you live for Christ, and you go to heaven. Um... In most sports, you uh, shoot a basket or you shoot a ball into a basket. You score more points than the other team. It's simple, but obviously it can be a very difficult thing um, to go through. But having hope in Christ is understanding that there is more to come, that this life we're living now is not all there is, even though we get stuck in this mindset that um, it's all, we're in the now, we're in the now, right? We don't, we don't look ahead in the future a lot of times. Now, um, I was just speaking about hope there. We define in hope. Now moving on to rejoice in hope. Paul is writing to the Romans, and, uh, you know, in, in this time, there's a lot of persecution. There's people trying to kill the Roman people, um, for being Christians. That's what, Paul, I mean, uh, you know, many times in the Bible, Paul's being persecuted for his faith. Um, you know, and he knew all too well that these these trials that we're going to face in the world, they, um, you know, he, they weren't going to affect his ability to rejoice in that. Because why do we rejoice? Why, why rejoice? It says rejoice in our confident hope. Why are we rejoicing? It's because we have hope. You know, Paul is referring to this hope that we will be with the Father one day. And again, it's a simple concept, but um, it's not, it's a discipline, just like anything else in our life is a discipline. Um, reading every day and praying every day, it's a discipline you have to get in the habit of. Um, even when life's smacking you in the face and all these graduates, they got 800 people in their ear and, and all these decisions to make, um, waking up every day, getting in your word, um, praying, and rejoicing that we have hope. Um, it's all a discipline. And then how often do we look ahead, uh, you know, at Christ's will for our lives and what he's already done and rejoice in that? 
sometimes um, during worship, I will take a step back. I apologize. I'm moving a lot. Yeah, it's... Um, a lot of times I'll take a step back, you know, if you get in the funk, you're not... Um, the worship music's going, you're not really sure what to uh, what to say to God, how to talk to God. Uh, I think something that's really helped me is just taking a step back and looking at where I've came from to where I am now um, and just how Christ has, has done that. And, and obviously, I can look at um, the people around me, um, my fiance, my future stepdaughter, the youth kids, um, and just what Christ has done in my life, someone like me, that he's put all these, these puzzle pieces together. And again, I've been on both roads, the, the narrow path and, the, and that, that wide path that everyone takes. And I promise, life is miserable without Christ. Romans 8, 23 and 24. And we believers also groan, even though we have the Holy Spirit within us, as a foretaste of future glory, for we long for our bodies to be released from sin and suffering. We too wait for the eager hope for the day that God will give us our full rights as his adopted children, uh, including the new bodies as he's promised. Verse 24, uh, we were given this hope when we were saved. Again, this this verse, these verses, uh, Romans is just telling us that there, this life isn't all that we have. There is more to look forward to. But obviously first, and we'll get to this a little bit later, in order to, to have that hope, to uh, be able to rejoice in that hope, um, we have to accept Jesus into our heart first. We can't just, um, you can't just live a life of sin and expect um, for something greater, right? And just a little side note. Um, I think at camp last year, they talked a lot about, being, maybe it was a couple years ago, being in God's family and God adopting us. And what a great verse to show us that God literally wants to adopt us as his children, right? As it says, uh, God will give us our full rights as his adopted children and wait anxiously for sonship. God wants us to be um, a part of his family. And, and also, you know, something else to rejoice in there. Um, this next command, so all these in um, Romans 12, all these are, um, you know, Paul's talking to these fellow Christians and, and just trying to encourage them. Um, this might be one of the more encouraging sermons I've done. You know, a lot of times there's, you know, you try to challenge people or teach. There's a lot of teaching sermons. You know, I'm trying to, to give these graduates and and, and the congregation some encouragement because co I mean I know COVID really messed a lot of things up um, I you know the numbers are there uh, when it comes to um, how it took a toll on us mentally and but we have hope and if we rejoice in that hope um, you know Christ Christ will really uh, reveal himself here but the next command um, <laughs> the next command of Paul becomes a lot easier if we rejoice often. It says, be patient in trouble. Anytime I hear trouble, I always think of, you know, a parent and a child thinking you're in trouble. If it was a youth group, I would ask, uh, I try to ask them a lot of questions, you know, to get them involved. Um, and I would ask them, what's the worst trouble they've ever been in with a parent? And sometimes, um, I was in way more trouble than these kids ever were. I'm just joking. I was the good kid. Um, again, these Romans at the time uh, Paul was writing to, they were subject to this persecution. And he just gives them these two commands, which, what? I mean, let's be honest. If you were being persecuted, like literally afraid for your life um, because of your faith, I think the last thing you're thinking is rejoice and to be patient. Easier said than done. Um, I was reading this, uh, be patient in trouble, and just the patience kind of got in my mind. And um, 
it's a lot easier on Christmas morning for a little kid, for like Chloe, to be happy and rejoiceful, right? She's, she's excited for these presents. She knows that there's presents in there. Um, it's a lot tougher when you have to be patient and just sit there and wait for me to come over and, you know, wait for, wait for every dinner or breakfast to be done. It's a lot more difficult. Um, and, and, and Paul, of all people, he understands that he's not downplaying this, this pain that life um, brings. I mean, we all know life's very unpleasant sometimes. Um, there's not all happy moments. Um, but uh, here Paul is trying to tell us, he's pointing out that these struggles of life don't compare to what is yet to come. I had patient in this verse, this is a Greek word, and I had it in my head, I, I listened to it. I think it's hypimeno. I think it's what it, what it means, uh, is what it, or how it's pronounced. It means to remain, to not flee under misfortunes. To endure. Let's, you know, when, when Christ saves us, we don't automatically just become impatient. We don't automatically just become rejoiceful. We don't automatically um, just get in this habit of prayer. Um, you know, we, we have questions. Um, uh, we learned in the youth group this Wednesday. Uh, there's, there's questions that well, I'm not going to answer, that pastor's not going to answer. Um, and that's good. Well, all these things don't just come to you. Um, but instantly, as soon as we become saved, as soon as we give our life to Christ, we tell Christ we want you um, you to live my life. Does that make sense? I messed that up. We don't automatically become impatient, but what we do, we do receive the power of the Holy Spirit instantly in the Bible. It says once you receive Christ, the uh, we receive the, the power of the Holy Spirit. And that, the power of the Holy Spirit is, is the thing inside us that um, it strengthened us to be patient, to rejoice, um, to, to stay away from sin, to flee from sin. The Bible says to flee from sin. Um, graduates, especially the ones going off to college, you're about to hit a lot more freedom a lot more um, people and stuff being thrown in your face. You have to have the Holy Spirit inside of you now before you get out there. Um, you, you can't you can't live this life on your own. Um, someone who me, someone who grew up in church, um, had a you know I would. You know, a pretty consistent walk with the Lord. I'm telling you, if you're not in the Word and you don't know why you believe the things you believe, um, the enemy's out there in different ways and, and, and will try to distract you, will try to think just this one time, compromise this one time. And, and I can't stress it enough that you, you have got to, to build this relationship with the Lord. Because trouble, trouble in life, I mean, um, you know, death, uh, separation, all, all these things that you know that, that life brings, you, it's either going to drive you, um, it can drive you, or, or, or it can draw you closer to the Lord, right? And that's where it, um, just having that relationship with God comes into play. If you're putting God on the back burner, not praying, not seeking him, and then these afflictions in your life come, and, and you know, you throw your hands up, God, why did you let this happen? You know, uh, that, that relationship with the Lord is, is what's going to um, obviously not change the situation, but, you know, with every circumstance, we have a choice. We, you know, naturally, we are born into sin. We will react, uh, you know, to our, our sinful desire, or we will, you know, yield to control um, the spirit living in us and, and, and draw us um, away from that sin. Do 
James chapter 1, 2 and 3. Count it all joy, my brothers, when you meet trials of various kinds. For you know that the testing of your faith produces steadfastness. And everybody say steadfastness. Yeah, try to say it three times fast. <laughs> um, so what this is saying is life will throw things at you. Life, you're going to wake up some days and it feels like life punched you in the face. Um, but if you have that relationship with God that we're talking about, uh, if you keep the, you know, um, keep your relationship strong, then God can produce this good fruit out of it. Uh, again, in John, it says, "In this life you will have trouble, but take heart; I have overcome the world." Again, life's dragging us down. Uh, uh, you know, we, we have trouble, we have affliction in our life, but we have that hope. We we have that understanding that Jesus Christ. Um, it is the head, just like uh, Jason was talking about, um, you know, that uh, men keeping the head, uh, Christ at the head of your home here. Yeah. Keep on praying is the, the last command in this verse in Romans 12, 12. Rejoice in confident hope. Be patient in trouble and keep on praying. We're reminded to rejoice in hope and be patient during affliction um, because, and, and Paul writes this because he knows it's not easy to do these things. It's not natural to do these things. This command becomes a lot easier um, when we keep on praying, when we have this constant prayer life. And this is what I keep preaching at um, the teens on Wednesdays. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm in your ear. Um, if you, you know, in the word, you're, uh, a steady prayer life. Um, this is where you get your strength. Um, just like any relationship, you know, that's, that's what separates um, Christianity from the rest, right? Is that we have a relationship with God. And just like any relationship, in order to grow closer and strengthen it, you have to spend time together. Daily prayer, daily communication. First Thessalonians, rejoice always, pray without ceasing, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus for you. So even when you don't feel like it, even when you're busy, um, even when you're going off to college and your schedules change, even when trouble and affliction come into your life, it says pray without ceasing and rejoice always. So now it comes down to the question, why? Right? So a job of a pastor is to, you know, uh, pray to God, you know, what direction, um, you know, does God is God drawing us here, and then, you know, try to put it in a way um, that the congregation, you know, like understands it, right? And the only way to do that is if you think, well, how does it apply to my life? Why do we need this hope? Um, earlier in First uh, Corinthians, we understand that our hope. Um, needs to be in Jesus. Jesus is our hope for that future, right? We're not going to get to that future um, without without Christ. But it goes all the way back to the beginning in Genesis and Adam and Eve when sin was brought into this world. Um, we all understand Eve messed it up, okay? Um, through the disobedience of the apple, Adam and Eve, and, and at that moment, they disobeyed God. God, God it's a mind-blowing story, but God gave him this whole forest, all right, whole Turkey Run State Park, right in the middle. Um, you got the tree of life. He's like, listen, you guys can have all this stuff, but he's like, not this tree over here. He's like, you cannot have that. 
But of course, we get told that we can't have something, so we kind of creep over there, and we just look at it, and we wonder why we can't have it. And the enemy starts getting in their ears. Are you sure that's what he said? And so at that moment, humans became separated from God. And in the movie, you know, oh, like all hope is lost, right? Where, where have you guys heard that all hope is lost before? I, I, I automatically think of superhero movies like The Avengers. Can you, I don't know if you guys seen that, but picture the Avengers, the bad guys in, destroying everything. It, it looks like, uh, you know, we're, we're just going to um, fall into the, into the doom. We got nothing. And then, oh. but then, it's crazy. God had this plan, and the superhero, Jesus, he came and lived this life in no sin, but he died a sinner's death on the cross, he defeated death, and he became that bridge for that separation between humanity and God. He became that bridge. And now, I don't have a verse for this. I thought I did. And now, if we accept Christ into our life and we live for him, we have hope. But it starts, it starts there. It starts, we have that separation with God. And, you know, now I'm obviously talking to the people who have not made that commitment to Jesus. You have two options in life. You have two choices. You follow Christ or, you know, at the end of the day, you deny Christ. And not to preach, I'm not trying to preach this fire and brimstone. But at the end of eternity, the Bible makes it clear we can either make heaven our home or we will make hell our home. Accept Christ or deny Christ. We don't have hope unless we accept Christ, right? And, and I'm, I'm trying to wrap up here. And graduates, I, I, I can't stress it enough to begin to build this relationship. And I'm not, I'm not even saying make this emotional, like, yeah, I need hope in my life. I'm not saying. Understand what um, being a Christian really is. Go in your Bible, ask questions, go, go find out what it means um, to be a Christ follower. What, what the commitment means, the denying ourselves, right? The Bible says to deny ourselves um, more of him and less of me, right? And, and, you know, you guys, again, um, everybody, you know, God has a will for each and every person in here. Um, and, and we have to have, we have to uh, be, you know, connected with him um, and, and listening to his will or, It'll be all for loss, right? So I'll ask the worship team to start coming back up. Um, and at this time, we probably are going to embarrass the graduates a little bit now. I know at graduation, you know, there's a lot of emotions and people trying to hide it, but man, this is a huge time. Like this is, I mean, everybody goes through something like this in their life, right? Like the next step, and this is a huge step. We got middle schoolers going into high schools and we all know it. high schoolers can be brutal, right? I mean, they're at the, there's not many great, great friends in high school who are um, trying to build you up all the time. All right. There's going to be people trying to drag you down. There's going to be people trying to get you things you know you shouldn't be doing. Um, and high schoolers, you're about to go on a new stage of life. And it's, honestly, it's not that great. You're going to start paying for stuff. And yeah, it's not, it's, it's not, it's not all um, pretty flowers all the time. So what we want to do is ask you guys to come up here. Um, I know this is the embarrassing part. If graduates, middle school and high school, if you guys could come up here, um, 
yeah, we're, we we want to we want to pray pray for you, um, and then we'll have a, a short time of worship. You guys can just circle up. If you please come, people of God. This I'm mean, again. You guys know this. I mean, man, life stinks. You guys um, in the crowd here, go ahead and come circle up around them. I know it's it's a little uncomfortable, but this is a. This is real life stuff, you know. Brad, I'll pray a little bit and then if you would take over after. Lord, I thank you so much for these these graduates, these students moving on to the next stage of life. Lord, I pray, God, that they um, just, that, that you help them come to this realization that they need you now and that you do have this plan for their life, Lord. I just ask, Lord, that you begin to give them direction and discernment. I pray, Lord, that you bring um, just positive role models into their life. Uh, you know, right now we just begin to pray against the enemy that is going to come against them, Lord. Just, just protect them um, on their on their walk. Guide them as they seek the next um, adventures for their life. 